we are doing this webinar series from Association of North America Higher Education International. Um, it's a non-profit organization and our mission is to promote and encourage a global culture at member institutions and also ensure that students and faculty successes are globalized uh, by enhancing global initiatives among member institutes and uh, global engagement. Uh, today, uh, other than this webinar series, we also do have different conferences, journals, and stuff like this, which is part of Association of North America Higher Education International. In short, we call it ANAHE. Now, um, today, uh, I would thank Professor Dr. Stan, who is a professor in tourism economics, and he is also vice rector for research in Verna Institute of Management in Bulgaria. Um, he is. He has recently developed his interest into robotics uh, and robonomics, which is a very interesting name. So I saw he has been invited to different places to talk about this topic. Um, and since he is a good friend, I thought of exploiting this friendship and inviting him to talk uh, about this topic um, in as part of the webinar series uh, for Anai. So um, what we will be doing is we will um, record this webinar for those who cannot join in live and will post it on the website for Anai and also on Facebook so that people who did not join can later on learn about it. Or Now, if you have any questions about the webinar, throughout the webinar, you can use the chat option in the Zoom and or raise your hands. We'll take your questions and um, during the webinar for a couple of minutes, we'll take a break and we'll ask those questions from Professor Stan. Now, um, other than that, what we'll have to do is um, I'll quickly tell you a little bit more about Anai and then I'll give Stan a chance to talk about this topic. So Anai, we do have visiting scholar programs. We invite scholars from around the world to USFSM uh, so that they can work with us in terms of research or some other collaborations. We do have partnership programs around the world where students and faculty can go into different member institutes. Uh, there are two journals we are having under ANI. One of them is AIBA Journal, which is International Interdisciplinary Business Advancement Journal, and the other one is Journal of Global Education and Research. Uh, ANI also organizes multiple conferences around the world um, every year. We do have different awards and scholarships, and we have distinguished lecture series such as the one today. Uh, if you want more information or if you want to join ANI, you can go on ANI.organization or ANI.org. Um, the webinars, today's webinar and some previous webinars or upcoming webinars, you can also go on this link and um, check out all the webinars we are arranging. So um, Stan, uh, he is a good friend and that's why I'm calling him Stan. He's a professor in tourism economics. He's also vice director for research in Verna Institute of Management. Um, there's only one um, tourism journal in Bulgaria and um, a very, very good journal. I've published a couple of papers in that journal too. Uh, European Journal of Tourism Research. It's indexed in Scopus. And if you are following Stan on Facebook, you will see that the journal is doing very, very good. He has recently indexed it into ESCI, which is the stepping stone for the journal to move on to SSCI. And once he does it, I think he is going to get a lot of submissions from Asian countries. Um, Stan has published over 120 publications, which are including journal articles, books, books, chapters, conference reports, industry reports, etc., into multiple fields. One of them is robonomics, which he's going to talk about today hotel marketing, hotel chain pricing, revenue management, destination marketing management, etc. Um, and he has uh, worked on his research into the United Kingdom, the Netherlands, Norway, Cyprus, USA, and Italy. Um, that, that's pretty much about Stan's um, introduction. And now I'll invite Stan to uh, move forward and start his own presentation and talk about the ergonomics. Stan? Okay. I unmuted myself. Uh, do, you hear, uh, do you see me? Hello, do you hear me? I cannot start the video, however. Okay, the video started. 
So I will share the screen now. Okay, and uh, this is the presentation. So, Robonomics principles, benefits, challenges, and solutions. Quite provocative topic, but uh, uh, quite new. And I hope that in the future it will attract a lot of research. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Ali for inviting me for this uh, webinar. And of course, I'd like to thank all the attendees for uh, sharing this time uh, with uh, me. I will skip my presentation because uh, Faizan already presented me uh, in great details. So, robots have arrived. And if um, when we mention the word robots, uh, usually uh, some people think about uh, robots like this, like C3PO, R2D2, BB-8, that are full with uh, different gadgets and uh, they can help humans in, uh, any ca in any situation. Of course, such robots, they exist in uh, Star Wars, but uh, in reality, we are not talking about such robots. Of course, other people, when they hear um, the word robots, uh, they, um, they think about terminators, artificial intelligence that is uh, going to become sentient and will uh, kill all humans on Earth. Um, thanks God, we are not talking about such uh, robots and probably this uh, scenario is not coming uh, anytime soon. And uh, there's also a third group of uh, um, People who think that uh, when we mention robot, we are talking about um, androids uh, that have uh, that resemble human beings uh, in any aspect, including intelligence. Of course, uh, in Isaac Asimov's uh, books, there are such robots, in, including telepathic robots, but uh, we are not talking about uh, such cases. When we talk about robots, we are talking about robots like these ones. Um, We've seen, uh, we've seen robots, artificial intelligence, and automation technologies being widely adopted in uh, manufacturing. In fact, if we see, uh, if we make research, we'll find that uh, most of our cars are actually produced by robots, not by uh, human employees. Uh, and recent research about uh, manufacturing in uh, America show that uh, actually the decline of uh, manufacturing jobs uh, in the United States was a result not so much of uh, the Mexicans uh, taking the jobs of uh, poor American employees, as some politicians say, but uh, because of uh, productivity increases uh, based on uh, automation technologies. Of course, robots are entering warehousing, supply and logistics, um, so that uh, instead of having human employees doing all the tedious uh, tasks, we have robots that do all the sorting of um, uh, products. Of course, robots are entering agriculture and, um, many, and uh, many farmers in Western Europe are starting adopting uh, robots um, and um, uh, technologies to overlook for, the, for their crops. And self-driving cars, this is uh, one of the uh, newest hypes. And um, they, are not, uh, quite, they are not available uh, for sale yet, but in the next few years, they will hit the market. Currently, they are at a testing stage, and, um, but uh, they have a huge potential. Of course, in medicine, robots have been widely adopted. And in many cases, uh, um, some operations have been assisted by uh, medical robots. Of course, uh, robots have entered warfare. This is the dream of uh, any uh, army general to be uh, able to, um, to, have, uh, um, to take military actions without involving uh, his own soldiers. And uh, unfortunately, such uh, military drones uh, have been quite, uh, quite often used in recent years. And also, artificial intelligence uh, is uh, entering legal services. Uh, computer programs are helping uh, lawyers to sift through various uh, cases and to find the most suitable ones that will help them 
to justify particular thesis in uh, in a in a uh, war case. Of course, in hospitality, we have uh, robots hitting hotels, like robot concierges or, uh, or robots that are used for delivery services in in the hotel. Uh, currently, there are few hotels that are completely automated, uh, that are automated, although not entirely completed. This is these are hand hotels in uh, Japan, uh, but uh, customers have uh, mixed uh, acceptance of uh, of this uh, completely automated uh, hotel, automated hotels. Of course, uh, we see automation technologies in restaurants, so. Um, the uh, different kiosks uh, where uh, the customer can order, uh, uh, can order their uh, meal, can pay, and uh, just uh, wait for the um, for the pickup of uh, the food. And uh, in re in other restaurants, uh, we also have uh, conveyor belts which uh, also deliver the food, so that waiters are not necessary. For meetings and events, we have uh, robots. Uh, um, that they that they use for telepresence, so that instead of a person to travel to the destination and to have the meeting, we have the ro uh, we, we have the person connecting to a robot, and uh, the robot is uh, moving instead of the person there. This, uh, by the way, raises uh, questions about the future of travel. Of course, um, sometimes uh, robots are also used for. Um, for delivering food, uh, for delivering drinks during uh, during breaks at uh, conferences and uh, events, and uh, next year one of the cruise wine companies is um, uh, is launching a, a ship which will have uh, one bar which is completely run by robots, by these same cooker robots. Of course, in theme and amusement parks, so we have uh, automated tickets machines, uh, which can um, which allow hundreds of people to uh, to buy tickets without any um, problems and uh, skip the queues. Of course, at uh, airports, uh, other transport stations, we have all these self-checking uh, kiosks. And in, the f and in the near future, we will have uh, carts uh, that will deliver um, uh, the luggage. Yeah, travel agencies, tourist information centers, they also use kiosk for provision of uh, information uh, so that um, the time of um, the employees in these uh, agencies and information centers is saved so that they can perform other revenue generating activities. Museums, art galleries, they also use robots for provision of uh, information and uh, Digital assistants are on the market. So uh, this is um, uh, Echo uh, and uh, Echo Show uh, by Amazon, which uh, operated by um, Alexa software package. So that um, it, it is voice operated, and uh, the user can and, uh, can ask um, the digital assistant to perform different uh, tasks. Completely voice operated. Of course, in households. We have uh, autonomous um, vacuum cleaners, which is the dream for every uh, household. And we have, for swimming pools, we have uh, automated, uh, we have autom uh, robotic pool cleaners, which uh, help the employees um, and hotels uh, clean the pools. And of course, we have uh, robotic guards uh, who uh, who move around and uh, record, and uh, they can um, make, uh, they can inform the, the responsible people uh, about something wrong uh, that is um, some wrongdoings. A few months ago, there was uh, one such robot that uh, fell into a fountain, and it uh, caused um, quite a, a viral reaction on um, social media that uh, these robots are quite dumb, but uh, I'm pretty sure that there are more people that fell into fountains than uh, such robots. Of course, uh, we have other robots um, uh, like uh, this one, Pepper, uh, that can uh, um, developed by SoftBank Robotics, uh, which uh, can be useful provision of information in service industries. 
And uh, by the way, recently one of uh, the Bulgarian banks uh, um, bought several such robots and installed them in um, its offices in the country. Of course, artificial intelligence is used in the search engines so that it can uh, it helps uh, do, uh, it helps users receive results that are relevant for them and often they are localized. And also in uh, social media chatbots, this is a screenshot um, from the chatbot of the European Journal of uh, uh, Tourism Research, which I developed a few months ago. It's relatively easy to develop such a chatbot. Um, of course, in artificial intelligence is also used in uh, finance. Much of the trade on Wall Street actually takes place uh, by algorithms rather than by uh, human beings. Uh, high frequency trade uh, uh, can only be implemented by computers. Of course, in e-commerce, we have all purchased uh, different items from uh, uh, online retailers. And uh, miraculously, when we buy something, uh, then we start, receiving, uh, promo uh, we start receiving information, promotions about other related products uh, that, will that may interest us. So computers are helping here as well. And of course, uh, robots are entering uh, sexual services. Uh, um, I trust every, uh, every attendee is above the age of 18. Of course, uh, um, we have been using uh, mechanized male body parts for several decades now. They have been on the market. But uh, for the future, we are talking about uh, uh, Androids that will, uh, that will have um, uh, full resembles of uh, humans and will be used for sexual services as well. So the tendency to use uh, robots, artificial intelligence and automation technologies in the production of goods and services will definitely accelerate in the future until society reaches a point when, an over, when all, or overwhelming share of all the goods and services will be produced by such technologies with limited human involvement. Such an economic system based on robots, artificial intelligence, and automation is called robonomics. Or, put in more formal uh, terms, robonomics is an economic system that uses robots, artificial intelligence, and service automation technologies as production factors instead of human labor. This is the key thing. These technologies are substituting human labor. So, we may ask uh, the question, why robots? Why should we, why companies uh, may decide to use robots or why they would prefer not to use robots? Well, there are different reasons. The first one is that uh, robots could work 24 seven. If we, uh, a, human, a human employee can work 40 hours a week, if, uh, um, well, this is legal, yeah? but uh, in academia, we all work 60 hours plus a week. And, but uh, for robots, uh, this is obviously 24-7. Uh, uh, robots could implement various tasks and um, expand the scope um, and expand their scope with software and uh, hardware upgrades. Of course, uh, for human beings, this would mean education, training, going to university, having uh, training with other. Uh, with consultants and other companies, etc., but with robots, and uh, this could be uh, made easier. Robots also could provide constant or improving quality of their work. Actually, they will perform the same task the same way. Um, we all know that um, um, the emotional status, or the psychological status of a of a human employee always influence um, the service uh, that he or she delivers. Also, robots could fulfill their work correctly and in a timely manner. No need for reminders, no need uh, to uh, check again and again uh, whether the work is uh, completed. Also, they can uh, do routine work repeatedly, um, not like uh, uh, human, uh, human beings, we, uh, we get bored 
after uh, several hours of doing the same uh, the, the same work and uh, repeat and uh, repeated work actually dehumanizes uh, we can easily think about uh, Charlie Chaplin and um, his and uh, um, his movies also uh, robots do not complain they do not get ill they do, uh, do not go on strikes do not spread rumors they do not discriminate they do not quit their job without notice they do not show negative emotions they do not shirk from work and all these uh, negative things which um, human resource management uh, shows that it is um, unfortunately related with uh, human employees of course there are many uh, there are many arguments why companies should not use robots and uh, the list is obviously not uh, comprehensive robots lack creativity uh, they also um, uh, will not anytime soon be completely independent of uh, human supervision so that there will there will definitely uh, be a need of uh, humans who will supervise them also they uh, lack personal approach although the soft uh, also although the software um, allows um, uh, allows the, the robots to adjust their interaction with the humans on the basis of the situation in any case their flexibility is much lower than the flexibility a human employee can provide also, robots can orientate in structured situations, or at, this is at least for the moment, uh, which means that uh, when we have uh, more uh, unknown variables in a situation, then um, it becomes very difficult uh, for a robot. Also, robots will and may be perceived as threat by human employees. We all remember. Uh, we, we all um, we have also um, read about uh, the Buddhism movement uh, from uh, at uh, the beginning of uh, the nineteenth century, when um, when workers in uh, Britain were destroying machines uh, because uh, they were thinking that they were taking uh, their jobs. Obviously, we can expect uh, one such. Uh, movement to arise if robots, artificial intelligence and automation technologies become widely, widely used. Now, what prior studies uh, we have uh, seen on the topic of uh, robonomics? Well, we have opposing views of technological progress. The researchers' views range in two extremes. We have positive appraisal of liberating humans of manual labor and creating new business opportunities on one extreme. And on the other extreme, we have fear of pauperizing and making humans obsolete in a fully robotized society. Of course, we have 50 shades of gray in between. We have the optimists. These are, only, uh, these are the covers on, of uh, only some of the books that uh, um, that express the optimistic view of um, of the machine age uh, when we use robots machines automation technologies to produce uh, goods and services instead of human labor and more optimists uh, the future of business surviving the machine age all these share the same um, uh, the same viewpoint that uh, robots, artificial intelligence and automation technologies, they are not taking the jobs of humans, but they are not replacing humans, but, in, but uh, uh, on the contrary, they are enhancing the human employees and they're increasing the productivity. Of course, we have the other extreme. We have the pessimists and, and uh, authors who believe that artificial intelligence will will receive stations and uh, will reach stations and um, it will be our final invention that um, robots at one point will will become so intelligent that uh, they will perceive human beings as redundant species and will eliminate us of course from an economic point of view uh, we, um, I could recommend these two books that also share a more pessimistic appraisal of the situation. 
Of course, uh, we have another stream of uh, the so-called transhumanists who think um, um, they can be considered as, uh, as part of the optimists, but they are probably extreme optimists. They consider that at one point, human beings and machines will merge and new type of species will uh, appear. And uh, they also say that uh, this will happen by 2050. And um, I'm honestly, I'm quite skeptical on these uh, time frames. And of course, we have the disillusionment. We have uh, other authors who say that uh, transhumanism is, uh, uh, is uh, intellectual nonsense. But uh, other authors like uh, Stephen Webb, by the way, I highly recommend his book, All the Wonder That Would Be. Um, in this book, he makes um, uh, an evaluation of all the technologies that were expected to appear and why these technologies are so um, difficult to develop and uh, difficult to adopt, which is probably more important. Of course, in economics, um, in economics, there are different books that deal uh, with uh, the economic theory and how it will influence uh, markets and the whole economic theory. Uh, we have uh, books that deal with focus on different industries like uh, cars, healthcare, journalism, financial markets, autonomous uh, driving, and the political economy of robots, the uh, books that deal with uh, the power relationships within the society and how, this, and how robots will change uh, the power structure of society. Of course, robots are, are everywhere. Uh, it seems that uh, society has an insatiable hunger for robots. And different conferences are organized and um, the um, books on basic income, one of the solutions of Robonomics are published. And uh, of course, on national security and welfare, but of course, the publications in this field are quite scarce. Uh, we, we can understand why. Even humanities deal with robots. And uh, in these uh, books, uh, um, robots are discussed from anthropological perspective. This uh, raised uh, the question about uh, robot ethics and uh, whether robots can uh, actually have rights and uh, be recognized as uh, beings, although not human beings, but uh, robotic mechanized uh, beings. And um, how these and how the use of robots will change uh, the ethics of relationships within society. Of course, sex with robots, unfortunately, no graphical uh, pictures in these uh, books. Even Dan Brown incorporated artificial intelligence, intelligence as a character in his uh, recent book. And uh, if you uh, have read it, uh, you, you know the name of the character. So, my statement is that Robonomics is uh, inevitable. Last year, um, in October 2016, uh, the, uh, the National Science and Technology Council Committee on uh, Technology and the Committee of Technology in uh, the United States published two reports. Uh, that, were, um, that were made available on the website of uh, the President of the United States. They deal with, um, that focus on uh, how artificial intelligence will influence American economy and how the American economy should prepare for the widespread use of artificial intelligence. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development also published a report Several hundred, uh, several hundred pages that deals with the next production revolution. All these reports, they, they state that companies, societies, governments should prepare for the massive introduction of robots and artificial intelligence in the next 10, 15 to 20 years. 
what are the principles of uh, robonomics? Most important, we have high level of automation. And this is the core of um, robonomics. We have active use of a variety of single and multi-purpose industrial service and social robots. So robots will be ubiquitous, they'll be everywhere. However, I uh, should mention, uh, I should emphasize here something. We are not talking about uh, robots that, that can fulfill various tasks. So that instead of, uh, but robots that will, uh, that will implement uh, only few tasks. So that instead of having uh, one multifunctional robot that can perform various things at home, for example, to clean, uh, to wash the dishes, to hang the laundry, to drive the car, uh, etc. We shall have uh, different simpler robots that will actually perform uh, these uh, things individually. And some of them will actually not resemble um, human beings. They will not have anthropomorphic features. Also, another principle is that all or most of the products are produced or provided by robots, artificial intelligence. We shall also have extremely high cost efficiency of production. Economically efficient, on-demand, single, few units production of some goods. Currently, uh, three, uh, currently 3D printing is considered as uh, one of the technologies that would lead to this, but uh, probably this technology would need to improve in the future. However, this, uh, this high cost efficiency of production will lead to small and dispersed factories close to consumers. How would this happen? If we have, uh, let's say that um, these uh, uh, simplified relationships, uh, simplified ch uh, charts uh, that, uh, uh, that shows the uh, relationship between the costs per unit and uh, the number of units that are produced uh, within a company. So this is the production capacity, the horizontal line it shows the production capacity of a company, let's say the number of units produced in a year, in a particular time frame, time unit, and uh, on uh, the vertical axis we have the costs per unit. When we have high automation, then, um, then the curve that shows the relationship between the two uh, variables will move from A to B. This would mean that the efficient production capacity will move from uh, EPC1 to EPC2, which is a smaller uh, production capacity, meaning that uh, we should not need huge factories, but we could produce uh, the same things but uh, the, uh, with uh, smaller factories. But when we have smaller factories, then this raises the question, should, where should these factories be located? And uh, one of the solutions is that these factories, they will be located where the markets are. Meaning that um, instead of having uh, fac uh, factories in the developing economies and newly industrialized uh, nations producing pro uh, goods there and importing them in um, developed economies, probably we shall see the reverse move, the reverse movement of the factories going back to the developed economies and being located in uh, large urban areas. We shall also have high level of standardization of services with algorithmization of service uh, provision. This, uh, how, uh, however, raises the question, what happens with the human side of uh, services. And probably one of the things that we will observe in uh, the future will be the segmentation of uh, companies, of service companies into two big groups. One group that is, um, that, uh, that will be the group of high tech companies where you will have highly standardized services delivered by robots, artificial intelligence and uh, automation technologies. And we shall have another group of companies with, uh, which will uh, have, which will, we can call high touch companies, which will uh, focus more on the human side of uh, the services. And um, instead of technology, they will 
we use uh, human inputs to deliver the services. Uh, my personal suspicion is that uh, the high-tech uh, companies uh, will charge lower prices than the high-touch companies. And probably customers uh, will, will be more willing to pay for uh, human services. Probably this in the future will be considered as a uh, competitive advantage for uh, some service companies. Also, labor and capital abundance are not competitive advantages in robonomics, but knowledge and uh, creativity. When we have huge economies of scale and uh, low cost uh, and um, uh, low cost production of uh, services and uh, goods, then uh, obviously. Um, labor and capital will not be considered as competitive advantage. Also, we shall have fewer, but more knowledge uh, intensive jobs. And uh, finally, uh, which will cause uh, a lot of tension within the society, this will be the disconnection between employment and incomes. Currently in every country in the world, we have at least 35, 40% of people uh, that uh, receive uh, money from employment. Uh, these are the people that are within um, uh, employment age. But um, in the future, probably this share will decrease dramatically. What are the drivers of uh, robonomics? We can divide them into four different groups. Macro-environmental, micro-environmental, corporate level, and uh, psychological factors. First, the macro-environmental factors. These, uh, these are the technology, obviously these are the advances of uh, riot technologies. What they make possible, what is possible to be automated, these technologies actually allow to be automated. Demography, we have aging populations in uh, um, developed economies, which uh, lead to uh, disruptions uh, in the labor market. And uh, we see that uh, every generation is smaller than the previous uh, one, so that there will be a uh, huge demand for highly skilled uh, labor. Probably at one point, companies will start, uh, will start thinking for substituting this um, labor for such uh, um, technologies so that um, they decrease their needs for, lab uh, for um, labor. Politics, uh, governmental control and populations will drive uh, the adoption of uh, some technologies. The legal framework also anti-discrimination laws, labor laws, uh, they make uh, employment of, uh, they, they make uh, hiring human employees uh, sometimes extremely difficult. Taxa taxation, uh, also taxation make, uh, could make uh, robots actually more favorable to be used by companies. Culture and society also, what are the attitudes, uh, social attitudes towards uh, such technologies because uh, these will influence the adoption, the adoption rate within uh, countries. Also, the microeconomic factors, um, these are the labor market, lack of sufficient and qualified human employees. This will be one of the major drivers which will push companies to automate some of the processes within, um, um, within their operations. The competitive pressure, if uh, competitors uh, use uh, automation technologies probably our company should think about using uh, such technologies as well. And also customers, whether they accept to be served by robots or not, if they do not and if they do not want, why should uh, companies uh, do? But uh, we see that uh, the new generations are more eager to use uh, technology. They are, uh, they are tech savvy so that uh, this um, in the future they will, uh, they will probably adopt robots uh, quite a lot. Also on corporate level, we can think uh, about economic efficiency. This will be one of the major drivers here. Uh, the work for cost efficiency, productivity, streamlining operations, all these will, inf will uh, push companies to adopt uh, automation technologies. And also 
probably on psychological level, we can have some managers may want may just prefer uh, to use robots and automation technologies uh, instead of uh, human employees, just because it's uh, their preference. We should uh, we should also consider this uh, factor. And how will actually robonomics uh, come? What we have, uh, of course, we will have step by step. Of course, uh, we will not wake up in the morning and say, okay, now we, uh, now we live in a robonomic society. No, it will, uh, it will develop gradually. It's already developing. Uh, we have uh, adoption of uh, automation technologies by individual companies in an industry. Then we have the spread of these technologies among other companies in the industry then gradual spread of these technologies among industries and countries and of course spill all the effects of uh, automation technologies from developed countries to developing economies in the form of substituting low-cost labor in developing countries for automated factories in developing economies and bots um, it's these spill over effects they are inevitable for example if we take one company as an we can take as an example uh, a company uh, that uh, an, let's say an American company that has a call center in uh, India. Now, if someone calls the American company, the call is uh, diverted to uh, the, the call is diverted to, to the Indian office, for example, and then the um, employees there respond, uh, answer the uh, call, and uh, serve the customer. However, with, uh, with bots, with uh, artificial intelligence, at one point, it would be easier for the company to, uh, to have uh, such an office with much, much, with, with much fewer employees in the States rather than in India. So that what we'll see is that the company uh, that adopted, an American company that adopted the, um, uh, the technology that the technology is actually influencing the market in a complete in a different economy what are the benefits of robonomics we can divide them into short term and long term on the basis of when we shall see these benefits um, come into existence so first we see uh, for its short term benefits we can see uh, decrease in costs and prices uh, as a result of economic efficiency and uh, probably improved environmental sustainability of production because of was because of a decrease in uh, waste but probably the more important are the long-term benefits we shall see improved quality of life in the long term due to different factors first people will be liberated of hard manual labor actually we have seen this in the last uh, two centuries uh, with uh, the use of uh, machines. Human, um, because of the machines, uh, the share of people who are involved in manual labor actually decreased. Uh, we shall also see drastic increase in leisure time, which uh, creates the social space for time for, and time for creative and pleasure activities, also for tourism activities. Also, we shall have less or no work-related stress, improved health, increased life expectancy. Um, currently, globally, there are less than half a million uh, uh, people that are above the age of 100, but, but uh, probably of, uh, in the future, uh, being uh, above the age of 100 will not be something unheard of. Uh, global, uh, of course, uh, robonomics will lead to uh, global government, global citizenship, because uh, as we will see later, uh, when we discuss the challenges, we shall see that uh, uh, it will be extremely difficult for individual countries, individual governments, to cope with the challenges of uh, robonomics. Probably at one point, countries will need to uh, we'll need to grow into some, uh, we'll need to unite into something uh, global. And of course, accelerated space exploration, obviously, uh, 
at least uh, for the next uh, decades, um, active space exploration is feasible only by robots, regardless what Hollywood says. Of course, there are numerous challenges to robonomics. The first one, and uh, this is the main problem that uh, authors uh, and uh, recognize, and this is unemployment and relative overpopulation. Fewer human employees and lower salaries. Um, here you can see two recent studies, uh, Fran Osborne and Decanio, uh, which uh, actually focus on this one. The first one, it was extremely uh, uh, popularized in um, the last couple of years. Um, the authors found uh, that about 47% of all jobs in the United States are at risk of being substituted by artificial intelligence. And also they kind of show that, uh, the, you, that uh, when we use um, robots with uh, human, when we use robots instead of human labor, uh, there would be a significant drop in uh, wages. Obviously, this is uh, this is uh, this is an obvious uh, conclusion. However, uh, such uh, such results uh, they fuel the skip the uh, this they, they fuel the fear of uh, automation. Of course, there are other challenges of robonomics. Um, Psychological problems of people who find themselves with too much free time and nothing to do and no need to work. Uh, sometimes I joke that uh, free time is uh, people's uh, enemy number one because when uh, people have uh, too much uh, too much free time, they need to find uh, different activities so that uh, their brain has to be um, active. And um, but uh, now. Um, when people when people work when people work their mind is occupied with uh, work uh, besides other um, besides other issues but um, when people do not need to work what will happen pleasurable activities yeah fine but we'll see later fear social unrest political instability this uh, can be expected um, if we have if we have uh, historically unprecedented uh, unemployment rate of uh, reaching over 50 definitely we can expect political instability and the rise of uh, far right or far left uh, political movement we, uh, movements we have seen what happened during the great depression uh, when in when in europe unemployment uh, in some countries uh, re, uh, surpassed 20 25% and uh, we saw um, fascism, communism, and other ideologies that uh, gained uh, huge popularity because of uh, economic instability. Also, we can observe migration. Uh, we're not talking about millions, but we are talking about tens of millions, if not uh, more, if, um, if uh, unemployment reaches uh, highly, uh, historically unprecedented high levels of above 50 percent, and ultimately this may lead to some wars. However, there are also long-term challenges. Possible functional illiteracy. Humans may forget how to do things once robots do, th do them. Um, for example, a century ago, uh, nearly every man could ride a horse. But how many of us can now ride a horse? I cannot. Um, and uh, once robots start doing things uh, we shall not, and we, when we do not need to do some things, we may forget how these things are done. Also, we may observe division of society between employed and unemployed so that um, there might be other clashes in society, but also changes in social values. Is human life valuable? Do we need other people to satisfy our needs when we have robots? Especially if we have uh, robots um, in the type of companion robots. Also, possible significant decrease in population in the long term when uh, birth rates uh, decrease. So these are actually quite significant challenges 
and uh, these challenges fuel the fear of uh, different people um, about uh, the fear from uh, automation technologies. But what solutions can we have to the challenges of robonomics? The prior literature has elaborated on some solutions on technological employment, and these include like um, different uh, instruments like mandating employment, so that uh, companies, for example, uh, use a certain number of uh, employees. Or government job creation, this means that uh, the government hires people so that they do not stay unemployed. Work sharing would mean that uh, instead of having one employee working eight hours a day, uh, to have two employees working four hours a day. Or employment impact statements. Uh, for example, if a com company wants to, uh, uh, to change uh, technology or um, make uh, some reorganizations, uh, it needs to um, uh, it needs to prepare employment impact statement to show what will be the influence of uh, this technology on uh, employment. Uh, you may use tax policies, for example, uh, uh, financial incentives for uh, job creation. Of course, all these solutions, uh, they assume that given the right stimuli, the economy will create enough jobs to keep full employment. However, these uh, solutions, they may work on the road to robonomics but in order to mitigate the impacts of technological employment, but not during robonomics, when society reaches full robotization of economy and people do not need to work. So that this may be considered as some temporary solutions. So what, uh, solutions, what solutions can we have to the challenges of robonomics? First and probably one of, uh, uh, one of the easiest is uh, constant and fluid free uh, lifelong education. This means that uh, instead of, uh, um, instead of uh, going to the university for a bachelor degree, for master, probably uh, some people for a PhD, uh, people will need uh, to be uh, related to the university, to be connected with the university for a long time. Uh, probably at one point we may see the disappearance of classic uh, degrees like uh, classic educational levels of bachelor, master, and PhD because, because in an in a automated um, economy, this will lose their value. Uh, probably at one point we will see micro degrees, uh, something like short one, two, three months courses, uh, which uh, the, uh, which help the employees the improve specific skills until they need uh, until they ne need to go to the next level a few years ago a few few years later sorry also we may need, uh, also um, society would need entertainment would need tourism and leisure activities would need volunteering. This is because people will have uh, a lot of uh, free time. And when people have a lot of free time, sometimes revolutions happen. And if uh, societies uh, want to avoid uh, social uh, revolutions and um, violent revolutions, they will need pe uh, people's minds uh, uh, busy. So entertainment, tourism and leisure, volunteering, they may help, uh, uh, they may help uh, to focus people's uh, energy in uh, some directions. Also, robot-based taxation, universal basic income, birth control, birth right patents, and redefinition of uh, human rights. These are some more radical proposals and uh, I shall briefly uh, ex explain them. Uh, Rob, um, first, uh, about universal basic income. Uh, the sense of Rob, uh, universal basic income is that uh, it uh, that every person in the country receives a uh, uh, certain amount of money without without the need to work. No questions asked. For example, let's say every citizen of Bulgaria to receive 500 euros every month just because uh, the person is uh, a citizen of uh, the country. So when people receive such uh, universal uh, income, 
it, so this universal income serves as a social safety net. So that in a robotized uh, society and a robotized economy, when people, when there are very, very few jobs, people would need some income. And this is uh, proposed as one of the solutions. It's also easier to administer because uh, currently there are tens and, and hundreds of uh, different social payments in, uh, um, in a country and all of them require a lot of money and a lot of bureaucracy to administer. But uh, a universal basic income, when everyone, uh, when everyone receives the same amount of money, uh, regardless whether the person is uh, employed or not, uh, actually would, um, will, um, will be actually quite easy to administer. Oh, but there are many disadvantages. Also, it, it, for example, it will require a lot of resources to finance, which in the absence of or limited uh, proceeds of income taxes may be difficult to finance. Also, it may suppress many people stimulated to work and to improve their skills, thus making them permanently unemployable. So if, if people know that they, if some people know that they receive um, certain income every month, regardless whether they work or not, they may, uh, they may say, okay, I will not uh, search for work. I know that I will receive certain amount of money and I will not enroll in any free course in a university to improve my skills. But this means that they will become in time permanently unemployable. And also we may see migration and uh, subsequent social tension if such income is introduced in one or few countries only without strict migration control. My personal uh, viewpoint is that if universal basic income is introduced, it should not be done by one country, but it should be done either by a block of countries like, uh, let, uh, like uh, let's say the European Union or, uh, or NAFTA, or it should be introduced uh, even more radically on a global scale. This will uh, raise the question who will administer it and one of the solution is uh, a global government which I mentioned as uh, one of the outcomes of uh, robonomics. And of course some people including Bill Gates propose that robots should be taxed so that if a company uses a robot then um, it should pay taxes just as um, uh, in, um, just as employees uh, are taxed for their incomes. However, for uh, robot taxes, I see one major problem. They need um, tax authorities. They will need very precise definition what is considered a robot and what not, and uh, definitely robot producing companies, uh, they, will, uh, they will be able to make so small changes so that the new versions, uh, they will probably be not called robots so that they will not fall into the legal, into the legal and tax definition of a robot and uh, companies will not pay. So we shall see um, um, a mouse and cat uh, game between um, tax authorities and the robot manufacturers. And uh, I personally do not believe that uh, robot taxes will, uh, are feasible. And of course, there are some more radical uh, solutions and um, you can, and uh, I can illustrate it with another cover of uh, Dan Brown's uh, books. Uh, redefinition of human rights. Uh, the French Revolution uh, gave us the Declaration of uh, Human Rights and uh, the, United, and, uh, the end of the Second World War and the creation of the United Nations organization uh, gave us uh, the Universal Declaration of uh, Human Rights. Human rights are actual, uh, actually subject to negotiation within a society. They are not uh, something that uh, is... Uh, that, uh, that is uh, written in stone and stays in uh, time forever. And uh, it is specific for a particular uh, period of uh, human 
development. So some politicians in the future, when they, when they face um, the challenges of robonomics, uh, they might say that, okay, let's then redefine the human rights. Uh, and they may say that uh, we can, uh, that uh, people have uh, three basic rights, biological, political, and uh, economic. And uh, in each of them, they can either have it or not have the right. The bio and uh, the biological right, this is the right for reproduce, whether to have uh, children or not. The political right, whether to vote or not to vote. And the economic right, whether to have basic income or not. We may say that uh, these, uh, uh, that these are um, extreme definitions, but actually this is not the case. If we look at uh, history, in most European countries, uh, women re um, received the right to vote uh, between the two world wars. And uh, in Switzerland, they, uh, we, women are, are, were allowed to vote only as late as 1971. Um, the right to reproduce, we have had, uh, we, we've seen many countries uh, that uh, adopted uh, strict reproduction rules. And um, the one child policy in, uh, in China is a good example. But here we're talking a more extreme version, whether the person should be able to reproduce or not. So if, a part, if uh, we can uh, look um, at these three rights, each of them has uh, two options, to have or not to, or not to have the right, uh, we can have a matrix of eight possible situations. So the first situation is uh, when uh, everyone is allowed to have children, is allowed to vote, and is allowed to receive uh, basic income. So what we can see is that uh, the can uh, is such a situation the country will go into default because uh, we shall have an increasing number of people uh, that would receive uh, would need to receive uh, basic income, and uh, people might vote for politicians that promise that uh, this will continue in indefinite uh, future. So at the end, we may observe default of the country. If we, um, if we see these uh, situations alone, we can, uh, uh, the final outcome will be either a default of the country or mass poverty or a demographic crisis. If we, but, uh, if we um, play with uh, these situations, we can see that only a combination between options two and seven actually provides a stable solution people self-select whether they want the cozy life without work, but subject to sterilization or, and without the right to vote, or they will not receive any guaranteed income, but will have the right to vote and reproduce. Of course, these are extreme, uh, this is uh, the redefinition of human rights is an extreme uh, solution and definitely it will not be um, adopted in uh, in the next decades. This will be a political suicide for the politician or the political party that proposes this so that uh, we can sleep well. And uh, finally we should uh, never forget that uh, we should face reality. Although comforting wise, they always, uh, there, there is always a bigger audience for comforting wise rather than unpleasant truths. Finally, as a summary, the robots have arrived and they are here to stay. Prepare. Some references and a further reading. And thank you for the attention. I'm ready to, for, to answer your questions. Questions? Uh, 
questions. Thank you uh, also. I would like to thank everyone for participating in uh, this uh, webinar. And um, if you have uh, any questions, I'm available. Ah, you're asking on Facebook too. Hmm, I'm not on Facebook at the moment. So uh, let me just see. I will just stop sharing the screen. I will go on Facebook. So I see one question here. Uh, what is my opinion on the impact of robots so in developing? I see one question here. Uh, uh, hmm. I muted my uh, myself on Facebook because uh, um, I can I can say that. Um, the impact of robots on uh, developing uh, countries will be absolutely the same as uh, the impact on uh, dev on developed economies and uh, we shall have uh, um, spillover effects as i mentioned in the presentation from developed to developing countries when companies in developed economies introduce robots artificial intelligence and automation technologies they will in most cases substitute uh, employees uh, in, uh, from uh, developing countries. Um, instead of outsourcing, instead of outsourcing activities to companies in developing uh, economies, they will use uh, uh, robots, automated factories, and um, chatbots uh, on, uh, in their country. Yeah, this was the question by uh, Frida. Okay. Okay. Other questions? Okay, I see that there is a question from Anna Hay. Looking for, uh, do I think that robots will increase the gap between rich and poor? Definitely. Definitely the different, the gap between the rich and the poor will increase However, uh, the welfare of the poor will probably increase. So that the welfare of everyone will increase, but uh, the richer will become even richer. I also thank you for this wonderful question. It's, it's one of the main questions in political economy of robots the gap between rich and poor and how um, automation technologies are fueling it, are widening it. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Um, if you don't uh, have other questions, I would like to thank everyone for participating. You know my email and uh, I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you.